Hi, good evening everybody. Thanks for joining for the session today. I'm Emmanuel, your host and the presenter for this webinar. So, uh, so let me have, tell me about myself. I'm Emmanuel. I've been in the industry for past 4.5 years and this is my profile which you're seeing on the screen right now. So I work in various roles. You can see that I started as a resolution expert in Dell. Uh, as in a product based company, I was only troubleshooting hardware and networking issues and some of the virus issues as a part of my job. Then I got moved into CISA, my next company where I worked as a senior associate consultant and I work with various clients across the globe in terms of VAPT activities. Then I also moved into the risk and compliance team where I was a part of PCI DSS assessments and audit support activities that I was taking care. So I worked there with a lot of clients, uh, more than 30 plus clients over there. So I got a huge exposure from different industry and uh, about the payment security and knowledge of PCI DSS. And also I completed my certification with respect to the CEH and ISO 27001. Also uh, CPISI, which is a CISA specific certification from our company, which states I'm a certified PCI implementer. So going further, I moved into uh, EY. So in EY, I was working as a, in a risk advisory services and I was as a technology risk consultant. So I worked there for almost one and a half year where I was a part of uh, uh, risk advisory services such as uh, assessments, audits, risk assessment activities, and different cybersecurity frameworks from uh, regulatory authorities such as uh, RBI and uh, IIDA, etc. So I also worked on SOC 1, SOC 2 audits, and ISO 27001 audits as well. Then currently I'm working with a company called Optim, which is a SaaS product based company, uh, a logistics company where I've been a part from two months since I recently joined this organization. So here I'm working as a senior information security specialist, taking care of the IT security part. And for the rest of the knowledge and experience goes, uh, so this is all my certifications that I have pursued. Like I'm also a certified EY cybersecurity bronze band I hold. Apart from that, I have done certifications from uh, Udemy, LinkedIn, Cyberare, and also, uh, you know, like ISO 27001, CH, and all those other, other certifications which you see on the screen is typically that I have processed. So I have even courses done from various platforms to understand how well they offer the content and how good it is. So I carry a diverse experience all over my career. And uh, since I worked with various clients, different sectors in different industries, taking from the banking, a product based company, a manufacturing company, and a lot of uh, other segments in the uh, IT part. So because of that, I have a well diverse knowledge and uh, abundance of what you say that exposure to all these different environments and different uh, course that have performed, that have learned over the period of time. So going further, uh, why we are conducting this and for who we are conducting this activity for. So here are the contents that we are you know, delivering today. It's one of this uh, providing the introduction, then explaining you about the current job crisis, then jobs in information and cybersecurity. That's a major part we're going to cover. Uh, the next thing is about the resume writing and interview bit of a time and then going further it's about the references from where I've got all this information from then what are the courses offered by hacktivist so who are activists so as I said hacktivist is a training company uh, they are the sponsor for this event also they are they are a, like a group of people they form this training company where they provide courses based on specific skills it's not a particular certification, just like you go and get in the market. But if you are interested in a particular skill and you're focusing to develop your skill set in that particular domain, the activists are the ones who are delivering this course across the globe to various countries in their native languages as well. And uh, why are we conducting this program and who is it for? Uh, we are conducting this program for everybody in the information security and uh, cyber security domain, and also people who are freshers and who are experienced in uh, cyber security but looking for a change are also people in IT who are looking into uh, moving towards the cybersecurity field, I can say. So all these people constitute and this program is conducted for everybody uh, who are passionate and interested in cybersecurity. So going further, what is in it for you? What are the key takeaways that you can have? It's about exploring various industries. We will give me a brief overview about that and also breaking the myth of uh, infosec jobs, regarding salaries, opportunities, certifications and growth. How does this constitute your overall career uh, growth as well. So then what are the various domains? What are the various domains opportunities that are available in security and skill set that they you know, most probably look for? Then we have a switch career to cybersecurity. For example, if you are from a different background, even within the cybersecurity or external to it, how would you move your career uh, or how you do switch to a different job role? We are covering that up that part as well. The next thing is about how to build your resume and showcase your skills. This is a major part uh, where we'll be more emphasizing. 
and how to clear the interview. And this is about the tips and tricks that we can give you on improvising your soft skills. So let's really start with this topic, uh, introduction where it says InfoSec versus CyberSec. So here, I'm not gonna explain everything that's on the screen. Uh, the slides will be shared to you from the slide share and the link will be provided. So I will only give you a brief approach. So from a high level view, cybersecurity is a part of information security. So information security is a huge part. So anything that is digital, that, uh, that will be a part of cybersecurity. For example, my data, if it is in electronic medium, and if I need to protect it or hack it, that comprises of cybersecurity. Like if you perform a web, web app penetration testing, VAPT, and mobile app pen testing, also you might be performing all the security assessments with respect to that. It constitutes of cybersec because your data is in digital form and we are trying to protect it digitally. When I say about information security, it does not talk only about data in the digital form, but any other means. It may be data in the uh, mind that we possess from people, the risk from the hard copies, the way we are storing, how we were accessing, how are the business develop, you know, continuity planning has been done. Like it constitutes all the parts of CIA, but in terms of not just in digital asset, uh, digital uh, you know, form, but all the other forms as well. So as I said, cybersecurity is as part of information security, whereas information security is a very vast and very big domain to cover. So we are talking about the current job crisis. Okay, uh, let me explain where everybody has questions. Okay, is this a good time for a career change? Are we getting hired? Do we get jobs or not? So this is a screenshot taken from Economic Times that I've attached. You can go ahead and check even today. The left-hand side screenshot is taken uh, two weeks ago where we have mentioned about uh, the declining in the jobs, the pay cuts, layoffs that has been happening, uh, how lockdown is impacting a lot of people in terms of uh, jobs, people are not able to do work from home, like a lot of challenges they've been facing now. So over a period of time, like two to three weeks back, this is, is this news was all over the net. Now, if you see work from home jobs have been growing immensely and people are moving towards this work from home culture more. And uh, like if you have seen a couple of companies have all, also announced that their employees can work from home as long as they need. So there's no objection on that. If your companies are creating or you know the products for those uh, work from home, possibilities, for example, Zoom. Zoom app is one of them which allowed to do a lot of meetings from home and work from home. So that product has grown immensely in this period and a lot of expansion has happened. They need more resources. Now, if you see Zoom also had been into controversy about a lot of security issues and bugs. And now they have been looking for hiring lot of security people to and protect their application and safeguard the uh, data of their customers. Now, if you, the same way, if you see the companies that Earlier, you know, if you all the not all the laptops were possibly having that. Now, if you want to move from to work, right, you need a lot of VPN resources, and you need a lot of that information that could help you uh, to do work from home. So that's the reason people are moving into endpoint security VPN so that they can protect the data on their endpoints when they are doing uh, work from home and their distance from the offices and office premises. So there are some areas where the jobs have been increased and they are still hiring is going on work from home jobs are still available and even if you are recruited right you will be onboarded virtually by providing your vdi or a vpn connection and you will be still able to work from the place wherever you are okay so there are jobs you don't have to panic or worry about losing the job if you have lost a job there are opportunities that you can get in cyber security if you have the skill set for it now looking at the current job crisis you might be thinking like why people give so much importance to cyber security let me give you a, a classic example. It was a data breach of Yahoo. So Yahoo was on some point a time was valued at $4.8 billion. So that's a huge sum. So if you see the company which was valued at $4.8 billion after a data breach, which costed uh, their user data to be exposed about 500 million users, the company was sold at $350 million just within a year span. So you see 4.3 billion versus 350 million is quite a huge difference. And that's how it has impacted the cost of the company. So if you see why companies are looking forward to it and why they, are, they should look forward to it, because the top five reasons why these data breaches uh, are causing a huge loss. One thing is about the revenue loss, which will is a loss of money. Uh, for example, the loss in revenue, which I have told example of Yahoo. Similarly, any company that is going for a, uh, you know, stock, if they're listed in a stock exchange or they're going for to becoming a public or IPO company. So they are going to face these challenges because if they get affected, if their, uh, you know, product is known to be insecure, then people will not use it and people will not invest on it. So that's one of the losses. 
The second thing after a data breach that could cause is about damage to brand and reputation. As I already said, like once people don't trust your product, they will not buy it, they will not invest on it, they will not look forward to use it in future. So that cause that will cause a huge loss in terms of brand and reputation. The third thing is about loss of intellectual property. So sometimes what happens is they get the data about your uh, what do you say? It's a property, right? intellectual property rights. It might be your diagrams, uh, something that you have developed as a source code that is specific to your product, which is proprietary to your company. So if that information gets out, your competitors will have an advantage and they can get those features incorporated in no time and your, your product will not have that competitive advantage. So you will have a huge loss if you have a, a loss in intellectual property. The fourth thing is the hidden cost. So I have summarized this hidden cost into different categories because it consists of your recovery cost. That means once a data breach has happened, right? You want to bring your business back up and running so that you could provide services back to your customer. At the same time, you need to contain, you need to protect, and also you need to provide, do the investigation. So it's a huge problem in terms of if you see a ransomware attacks, recently Cognizant had a maze ransomware. So whenever there is a, a ransomware attack, right? Your systems will not be able to support a function as they're required to. And if there is a DDoS attack or if there is, like if there is uh, like anything that causes your system to go down, right? It causes huge uh, recovery loss for you because you have to bring back that server or you have to uh, spin up another server and you have to provide services constantly to your customers. Second thing is about the regulatory fines. So I need not say how much regulatory fines is important nowadays because GDPR funds out there about 25 million or 20 million and anything beyond that it's really really going to be uh, too much expensive for a company and apart from the legal fees that defending against yourself and you know how to fight the cases to get your ins insurance to ensure that you are protected also to continue your business the next thing is about the investigation fees for example you have a data breach or if you're a bank if you're any company working related to your financial things if so to undergo an investigation, you need to get a forensic and an investigation report to that will show up what has caused this issue, who is responsible or what issue was responsible for it and how much loss it has occurred. And uh, so all this investigation is does not come for free. They have to pay a huge sum of amount to get that investigation report out. And based on that report it is dependent whether it and continue with that issue or it's still risky to continue with that. Uh, company and this also this report should constitute a huge sum in terms of getting uh, investments loans or whatever it is required for that company in future next is online vandalism this happens quite a lot amount of time if somebody is thinking your blog is good your youtube channel is good your website is good your product is good uh, they do some fancy and uh, what do you say that uh, like funny things they they can showcase some sexual content into your website they can just bombard with it and whenever the who are the you know visitors or uh your customers when they log into your website you know they will look all these vulgar things on the screen and they might not feel good yeah the few people brand and reputation loss because your website was not secure or your application was not secure so all these things constitute uh, a huge loss to the company because of these reasons they are giving importance and priority to cyber security and uh, that's why the jobs are growing fast every year so looking at this uh, gathered from so this is one of the linkedin job solutions emerging job report link have attached go here and you can check it out yourself there are reports for what are the emerging jobs every year over there and here as i mentioned like uh, as per top 20 future jobs in india and by two to cyber system. and and uh, there's a web link have attached you can go ahead and check it over there and there are like 12 times growth globally in terms of data security jobs 1 million cybersecurity professionals by 2020 and by due to this work from home scenario and COVID-19 situation, the demand has grown above 15% because there are abundance of opportunities but very less skilled people in this area and they are looking for uh, possible uh, what you call talented people so that they can organizations. So next thing is about uh, <clears throat> the emerging jobs report I was mentioning. So in this job report, as you can see, there are two things that have showcased from the direct report that I've got from the LinkedIn. One is for the Indian country and another is for the USA. So this will give you an overview. This will showcase you about what you need to know, the top industries that are recruiting and the skills that you need. For example, the skills most seeked after are like vulnerability assessment, penetration testing, SIEM, and uh, 
and cyber security and if you say like skills that you require are top linkedin courses that you can go ahead and learn from and which locations within india or us that are hiring for the most uh, uh, cyber security professionals if you say that's bangalore mumbai and gurgaon in india as well as in uh, us it's for washington dc new york san francisco uh, chicago and denver so these are the areas where actually they are looking for a lot of people with respect to this particular skill set so going further okay this was same from the report itself i have taken this will give you a map and the numbers also specifically if you see in each area how much of recruitment is going on and which industry they are hiring the most people so software and it services has the highest number of 12k uh, almost 13000 recruitments happening right now they're looking for so many potential uh, candidates right now and uh, this is one of the sources that can help you to figure out which location you can target which uh, company or which domain that you can target to get in uh, that will match your skill set so going further i have classified these companies into five different companies so it's tech companies i have classified into product service and consulting firms because uh product companies have their own softwares if you see for example uh you have some company google has their own android and uh, uh like uh, they have amazon has its own alexa kind of a software so it's it's all like a product they were even a uh, retail companies but they do have their own products and also if you say like mobile company samsung has their own product with the mobile uh, service and other is a service based company so these service based companies are ones who provide technical services it may be like your hcl infosys tech mahindra uh tcs all those are consulting services even cognizant they provide it services to other companies and consult companies these are like big fours ey pwc kpmg deloitte and other companies which are non big four like grand thorton and, and protivity like picture so what's the difference product based companies have their own product and they need to be performing cyber security to protect their infrastructure and protect the product if i go for service based companies most product based companies outsource the services to them so if you have sim product company doesn't want to have an sim team in their office so they outsource it to service recruit happens a lot over there because they don't provide the sim services to one organization but a lot of different organizations as well so it will be easier for them to get uh, services outsourced because they have the infrastructure they have the people so a lot of service based companies are the ones who are growing in terms of these and penetration testing so again if consulting companies and advisory companies companies to picture uh, they perform cyber uh, security assessments risk assessments it audits security audits certification audits they take care of it so consulting and advisory companies also provide various insights about uh, the cyber maturity model and how well they are in the field whether and they also provide vapt and sim services as well nowadays now apart from this people are interested to go for a uh, government job so there was a classic like many people think uh, if i want to go for a job i i rather try for the government itself so yes you will have opportunity in government because if you see police right you know i have recently received a, a notification where uh, in delhi there was a lot of opening for forensic experts and uh, they were looking for around like 20 openings and their salary started from 1.5 lakhs to 2.5 lakhs depending in cs uh, the department they were police also is hiring uh it might be other defense projects or drdo that is in india other projects i don't know but uh, even power plants because major uh, power plants or power grids also been hit been hit, been hit by cyber attacks so they are also focusing on finance they always stay there because all the government rules banks and finance companies are also looking for cyber security uh, people to be having their own team to help them support them to pro protect their customers information and also their financial information and electricity and power plant so like you might be thinking like power plant electricity what's the difference so if you see most of the countries or uh, companies have their own nuclear reactors and they have a cyber security team over there also because there's a possible threat because of industrial control securities that they have uh, so uh, because of these things their it also have to work efficiently to protect their infrastructure uh, structure so power plants also has a possible uh, you know uh, teams of information security working nowadays now apart from that what else can you expect it's a finance and insurance they always been there non banking financial corporations small finance banks auto finance companies insurance sectors 
they all have cyber security teams because some of them have a regulatory requirement they should have a ciso they should have an infosec team they should have some certifications done like iso 27001 and they have their own guidelines that have been issued so they also have to maintain a cyber security requirement as per the regulatory requirement and also they have some other requirements that they have to showcase uh, apart from that retail and manufacturing industries that's like uh, in retail and manufacturing you have like walmart flipkart amazon uh, so these are all you have seen like a retail shops to perform their day-to-day -day operations they need to have a good stable network from the customers they store the customers information so they have the uh, pii or personal identifiable information with them they might have the credit card information so to store to secure it they need infosec people and manufacturing units they also require them for their it functions to run so now going for telecom media and gaming so this is a new area and telecom was been there from a very long time but yeah like at&t verizon hotel they have grown massively because of recent uh, covid 19 situations like a lot of people are depending on the internet and uh, they have to maintain the data flowing in and out and also they have to support their infrastructure to be stable enough to provide the network connectivity now other thing you like companies like netflix uh hotstar they also hire because they have the product they have their application so to ensure the security of that application and to protect the data of the customers who are using their websites because it have the information about what kind of uh, information you watch you see and if there are any credit cards or debit cards that information also they have in their application uh, so they have to protect that and they have to protect constantly in terms of availability so if for example, if Netflix is down for one whole day, imagine number of customers who look for alternate sources. So to keep up that availability also, they need uh, cybersecurity people so that if somebody is trying to attack or bring their network down, they need to make sure that they have a good, reliable security infrastructure to keep the services up for the customers. So similarly for games, about Rockstar Games, it's GTA that you have played. Tencent Games, again, uh, Tencent Games about PUBG and your uh, uh, Call of Duty that's on the mobile. EA games, I don't have to specify them. It's NFS and uh, FIFA, all those games are from EA games. So they have cybersecurity people for their testing their products, product security and debugging them also to provide a, a good security uh, infrastructure for them. Because if you see once upon a time, Xbox was also one of the Sony uh, Xbox, I think it was a part of the breach. What happened was nobody, uh, they were not able to steal much data because their car data was secure. But apart from car data, they got only information about the uh, uh, people who were using the Xbox name and other details. So uh, it's, it's not a major concern, but yeah, they are also people who are trying to look for uh, data everywhere in all the possible sources and to extract there. So people are giving more priority to that part. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is just a website that I have attached, which will show you that how much requirement it is there currently for cybersecurity. So if you see job postings for cybersecurity is 76% compared to any other jobs right now in the market. Apart from that, there's a product, uh, projected growth of 28.5% in this occupation in the upcoming times. It's not completely, you know, I, I don't say like uh, once upon a time, you would be thinking like, you know, software developers are the most required person. It's not right anymore because cybersecurity requirement has been so much and there are a lot of you know, you know, vacancies that need to be filled up and they're looking for, hence, you have a huge surge in job postings in cybersecurity as of now. So this is one of the uh, you know activities that I would be very intuitive and interactive. So this is for the answering those questions. People would be thinking like, where should I start in the security? Where am I right now? Where should I start? And how should I grow in the ladder? So let me start from this as an entry level. You might be starting as a security specialist, security administrator. You can see on the right hand side where I'm talking about uh, cryptographers, security engineers, consultants, volumetry assessors, pen testers, forensic experts. But everybody can start off at the entry level. It's no, you know, you can you can't say that these roles are meant for everybody because if you have a specific skill set, you can get into these roles. So once you are in these roles, you're experienced about one to three years or five years, you get into mid-level. You can be a security auditor, founder, you can be a compliance manager, you can be a security architect. Then going above the management or the mid-level, you will be getting into uh, big leaks or C-level uh, executive leaks. You'll be a security director deputy CISO or a CISO is a chief information security officer. It's a high uh, designation that you can achieve in cyber security. And I have seen a lot of people uh, going to that position after 10 to 15 years of experience. So if you've been in industry for a quite a long time, you have knowledge from different uh, you know, 
uh, all these aspects that you see on the bottom. So I think uh, you can also be uh, getting the roles in the uh, CISO level if you are interested to move further. And I will show this website, okay? Uh, this is about uh, a sample website from CyberSeek. And also I'll be talking about Payscale on how it will help you. So if you see this, on the left-hand side, okay? Uh, let me use a pointer so it will be helpful. Okay, uh, let me go to this. So here on the left hand side, if you see what I'm going through, these are all the skill set or different roles which are of non cyber security roles. So you might be a networking engineer, you might be a software developer, it might be a system engineer or a financial risk analysis person, and you might be in a security intelligence, which is an SIM or a you know threat hunting or malware analysis, something like that. So now uh, this is also part of security intelligence is a part of uh, security, but yeah, still they have put it here. Now, if you want to get into a cyber security job in an entry level, okay? Now, I'll show you like, this will showcase different op job openings and uh, how much they are valued. Now, I'll go into entry level. Let me take an example of cyber security specialist. So, to get into this role, if you see there are job openings of 9,232 and also $92,000. This is in dollars, US dollars. Uh, so it re varies from region to region. I'll explain you that in Payscale how it varies from region to region, but keep this as an average salary in mind. This is for US region. Now, after going to entry level, what are the other roles I would have to go for? So if you see on the left hand side of this, uh, you have in the feeder role, if you have a networking knowledge, if you have a system engineer, if you have a financial risk analysis, you have security intelligence knowledge, if you have any knowledge of and be a cyber security specialist. Now, after getting into this role, you can go into mid-level. For example, I want to change my role to a penetration tester. Here I go. So security specialist, penetration tester, where my average salary is on like $103,000. And also I have like 13,000 openings right now. Now I can become a cybersecurity engineer or an architect from a penetration tester role in the advanced level. Now let me go for architect role. Let me see how it constitutes. Now, if you see, uh, to be a cybersecurity architect, the salary is about $133,000 with 5,857 openings right now. And from this role, you can go with like all the skills that you see on the left-hand side will constitute your growth towards this role. So this is very intuitive website. You can go here, you can check what is the roles, what are the salaries, how many openings are there, how you can move in your career in different roles from non-technical, non-cybersecurity role to a cybersecurity role. Or even if you are fresher, Consider like your CCNA certification. If you have a system engineer knowledge, consider a knowledge about your uh, A plus, Net plus, Server plus, uh, Linux plus, something like that, or your RHL certified. You know about Linux. You know about Microsoft servers. Uh, you worked on, you worked on product development. Or you can still, you are still eligible to take this. If you are from a financial risk analysis background, I'm an IT auditor. So. So if you see an ID auditor, he will be performing audits on financial assessments as well or financial audits as well. There is an IT part that is particularly required to look into and your skill set would be very much important over there. So yeah, even if you're from finance risk analysis back or information security roles. Now security intelligence. Intelligence, again, I said it consists of a lot of things, but if you are having that knowledge, you can still get into a cyber security. So knowledge is something I'm saying like either you are certified or you have that, or you have a particular knowledge which you can showcase. So many people have been asking me this question, okay, like uh, what should I do to get into cybersecurity if I'm a fresher? Let me tell you this. The first thing, if you're a fresher, uh, you need to have a proper, uh, have a graduate or postgraduate or master's degree, okay? First that, you need to have a certification which is very, not quite important, but nowadays it's become a, uh, basic requirement because many people are coming into cybersecurity without uh, experience or knowledge and they feel a lot of difficulties in coping up with it. So they look for a normal certification, something like a CEH or OSCP for penetration testers. So if you have those certifications now, uh, the question is about for non-IT people. Okay, they can also do the certification and come back. And for security professionals who are into audit now they want to move to penetration testing again it's the same thing you have to do a certification which is 
which will boost your uh, profile into getting into that role. Now, few people have a question like, I am not having uh, enough financial uh, support to do a certification, but it's, it's uh, quite costly. So what can I do to get into security? So this are different people who are trying to, so again, getting into, or uh, they're trying to getting into cybersecurity. So what happens here, you either perform a bug bounty, if you want to go to pen tester or capture the flag, hack the box, and there are a lot of other uh, activities and you make a proper report about your activity. You either make a blog, you make a report or you post what are the activities that you performed in your resume or make a separate report of two to three pages, attach it with your resume and send it. What happens is that you can showcase that even though you don't, but you have a practical knowledge and the skill to do the job. That will give a lot of and just show it, better do something and show it. So that's how I say that, okay, if you want to showcase your profile in a very presentable manner, make sure it's in a, a report format or some achievements that you have earned or through your skills. Uh, now, you might have questions, okay, if it is a non-penetration testing role, it's something about SIM or malware analysis, you can still do a malware analysis, use a lab, you have a lot of videos, we have trainings for that from the hacktivists as well, do those videos, look into it. You take an exam, for example, you take uh, one of the ransom, like a Locky ransomware or Grand Crab ransomware. A lot of people have done these reports earlier. Look into it, see how it has been done. Try to use a different set of tools than one which you have seen in the net. Try to understand why they're using that tool, why they're not using something else, because that will give you the actual knowledge, okay? If you want to try some other tool that's in the market that is newly available, try to see uh, how you can do the mal analysis, how you can do the reverse engineering, how you can understand this, and if you have some splunk, okay, you have some getting the logs, you are knowing about the SIM, you did the course, but you're not getting enough job, then try to understand how, why you're getting the so many logs, but you're not able to get the appropriate hits uh, in terms of getting the threat analyzed. So do a manual threat analysis, try to showcase in a report saying that this is how we achieve the result and this is what you're capable of. So it's better than if you can have a certification and do it, it adds more value. If you don't have a certification, you try these things, and let me know if it worked out for you or not, because I've seen a lot of people getting attention because of these things, because they have represented their skill. And uh, you know they also tell that if provided with a job or a certification opportunity from the company, they would do it. They're very much confident about it. Yeah, that's what they look for. So that clarifies your question about getting into security or changing or switching the job from a non-IT, uh, non-cybersecurity uh, background uh, to a cybersecurity background or uh, if you have to change the job within the cybersecurity to different roles, these are the things that you have to keep in mind on how to work towards that. Now, next thing we're talking about resume writing. So if you take any resume, any, any resume, right? It consists of three parts, the beginning, the middle, the end. Okay. The beginning is what consists of about your uh, name details and etc. Middle portion consists of your education, college, coursework, project details, achievements. And the last part consists of your experience, interests and hobbies. Now, what is a resume actually? So uh, let me tell you in this way, okay? I don't know you, you're coming for the interview for the first time, I don't know who you are. The only way I get to know you is through the resume that you're giving it to me. By looking at the resume, understand who you are, what do you know, what is your skill set, and what you're looking for, and how well you are aligned with my job requirement. So if you have a good resume that showcases how good you are for this role, that's the only chance that you can be able to make a good impression for this interview or for this specific role they are looking for. Because uh, first, everybody says this a lot of times, like first impression is the best impression, but nobody says how to get that first impression. So first impression, you put that effort in your resume. That's how you're going to make the impression on your resume. Because uh, only when you come to the interview face to face, I'm able to see how you're dressed up, all those things. But before that, if I don't see you, uh, if I'm not able to see you face to face directly or no Zoom call or no video call, the first thing I get you is I get your resume. You send me an email, you upload the resume in my uh, job portal. I only get to know through that. So make sure you put some effort on it uh, and design the resume appropriately. And I shall tell you how it is done. And when you're mentioning about hobbies, right? This is just a tip I'm giving. So don't mention the casual hobbies like listening to music, surfing the bay, watching Netflix. Uh, it's it's okay. It's, it's all the hobbies. Like hobbies consist of something unique that you do, something like a trekking, adventure trips that you do. Uh, you would go for uh, you play guitar or you sing songs or you perform. All these things are your hobbies. That that is very unique and that is very special. 
So make sure that you put it in the right way and have always have a clear career objective and make it personal also. So for example, I've seen many people, you know, uh, when they're sending their resumes or when they're drafting the resume, most mistake that we do copy paste. Some people, what they do is they have this headline, like uh, looking for a uh, job in cyber security field. That's good. But some people, they are from a IT background or a software development background. When they say that we are looking for a job in software company to be a best software developer or to become a good software developer or software engineer, it doesn't make sense because you are coming for a cybersecurity job by saying your career objective is to become a software engineer. So it looks very odd. So you have to maintain that when you're drafting the resume, make sure you mention your career objective precisely and how to do that, have a sample example over here. Similarly, you can put it in your own words, something like, okay, I'm a motivated person. I'm passionate about my cybersecurity and I'm looking forward to join and work in a organization uh, which emphasizes or pro provides me opportunities to learn and grow in cybersecurity field. So it's a typical example I'm just giving on the floor, but yeah, you can Google some information out and you see how others have represented and make sure you do it appropriately. Now, what are the other things you have to mention? That is your academic projects for freshers. It's quite important. You mention your projects appropriately. Uh, and uh, you have to mention it in a very precise way because sometimes most of them get the projects done from outside, they purchase it, they copy it, and uh, they had been a part of project, but they wouldn't have known nothing. So for them, it's quite important because your resume is showcasing who you are. Sometimes the recruiters would go for the academic projects that you've done and start asking questions like, tell me about your project, what role you have played in it, or what are the key challenges you faced, what did you learn from it, how did you tackle the issues, how did you bring the team together? So all these things comes up from the knowing how good you are or how well you know about your project. So keep an eye on that. Next thing is about relevant skills. So people will make a lot of mistakes, okay, when they're copy pasting the content from their friends, they make a list okay, like C++, Java, Java web application, I know, uh, what do you say, CSS, HTML5, uh, PHP, Ajax, everything they'll put it over there. And the, at the beginning they'll put one thing, basics of. And, and like you say, basics of everything, but what do you know perfectly? I'm not sure. So when you are mentioning that, right, make sure you are perfect in one skill that you can confidently put. Don't have to put all the skills because if I'm a recruiter, I'm looking for also a .NET developer and you accidentally put that up and I might question you like, if you know it, can you please do it for me? Can you please write a sample code for me or tell me about .NET, what do you know? So sometimes you might get caught with, you should not miss that. You should not, uh, you know, miss any opportunity that you get in hand, make sure you put the skills appropriately, only put what you know. And also don't feel bad if you have only one skill, no problem, but if you are very perfect in that one skill, that is your core strength, no issues. You put it across and they will be very much impressed with the skill that you have. So include an experience section. Okay, so what is this experience section like? Uh, for experience, it's quite important. In experience section, you have to mention the company you worked, what is the role, uh, your designation, how many years you've worked in that company, uh, the timelines that has to be appropriately put, then what are your roles and responsibilities and projects that you have performed and tools that you have handled. So these are the things that I have to look into experience section. Then or career movement or new to infosec people, I told you about this. If you want to go to that role, understand what is the role requires, what is the tools they use, what are the activities they perform, what is the skill set required. If you have it, try to do a practical activity, make a report of it. And it should not be even simple at least make sure something challenging that you have done that means if you have an existing project try to modify it uh, if somebody has done a penetration testing using for example they use only nmap entirely you try to use a different tool you try to use unicorn scan or any other scanning application try to use it and do it you can show okay that yeah previously the you know somebody has performed active using this but i didn't have enough information so i used this tool or instead of that if that tool was not available i've used other sources to gain more information so in you use different tools because explore those tools you get the knowledge only then you can be able to represent your report appropriately and then they might raise the question can you please tell me for this uh, project for your report when you perform this activity why did you choose this tool why did you choose this method why was your approach like in a different way what did you learn so all these questions when they add in that's how you can present your saying that you are skilled, you know what you're doing and 
you have done something practical a hands on experience also this is the best way to represent try it and see if that works for you then uh, this is a sample resume i have attached on the left hand side and the right hand side i have taken the same resume but in a different template so a few people have a lot of confusion like if i have a resume that should it look good or impressive or you know beautiful and colorful it's not that always everybody expects you to have a beautiful and colorful right content right hand side both the content is same just a template different no matter how you put it the main thing that you have to focus is to have an appropriate information and you have to fill up all those details appropriately and make sure the content is perfect so fresher resume this is the main thing you have to have the education details first put your skill set next then your internship experience then you put the projects that you have done and the courses that you have completed and your personal details this is how it should go in a flow and your profile summary would consist of like uh, what is like career objective that was i was speaking right so your enthusiastic in technical skills so it's quite general you can mention this your an enthusiastic cyber security uh, prof, uh, cyber security enthusiast okay when you say enthusiast it means that you are already looking to uh, grow in that particular role so you tweak that according to your job requirement which you are, you are applying even it might be non cyber any other role make sure that you put the right content in the profile summary or career objective thing is about the experience sample okay in this experience sample you see there's a major difference what is the major difference after profile summary the next thing is about highlights this highlights can you know consists of your skills course certifications that you have then comes your experience as i said the company name and on the if you see like you know slightly over here it will look about your of uh, experience in that company and the location you have worked what is your responsibilities or projects that you have handled then you mention about the tools that you have handled in that organization so that constitutes your experience you know perfectly that whatever you have learned next thing the last thing comes about your education and additional information additional information can be your hobbies your achievements your awards rewards whatever you got from the other company your social activities or not i mean like not the social activities but something you do for the community like uh, helping people or whatever the uh, services that you have done for the community you can put it over there also it's very impressive and also some people have memberships in isaka uh, ic square and they have been a part of nalcom so you can put all this information right there now last thing is about facing the interview okay this is a challenging part uh, where i want to give the most priority so i have told you about how to showcase your resume your skills in form of report and other things now how to face the interview when you are there because now it's a critical time they have uh, saw your resume probably they were very impressed now you have to take up a interview to face or on call how are you uh, prepared i mean how are you being prepared for it how confident you are everybody has gone through that phase uh, like i don't say everybody is perfect to take the interview like in a one go shot so everybody needs to do preparation first for it so because uh, is a road map to be so you have to plan it you have to prepare for it so what are the things that you need to do to be prepared okay first thing is knowing about your profile that you are applying and the company that is hiring so that is very much important and also i will show you a practical on all these things that i have just told right now so i will give a clear picture so know the profile and the company that is recruiting and also dress accordingly as per the dress code okay for example if it is a consulting or a, a service based company in formals so when i say formals it doesn't mean that you can wear whatever uh, you require but i would say suggest you that you have to always wear a contrasting uh, pant and shirt it might be a dark or a light color shirt that you like to wear and if you are going with a black shoe make sure your belt and your wrist watch either go by black or a metal or uh, if you going for a brown shoe make sure your belt and your wrist go with a brown or it can be a metal strap so what happens is that you maintain a proper dress code and there are a lot of websites which give you this information how to uh, dress formally and other details and uh, all you know normal etiquettes that you need to follow like you have to be tucked in high and shoe is polished you have well groomed not a uh, complete beard because if they say a formal attire that means they are looking for a well groomed professional so is about casual so if they say casual don't be too lenient or free don't go with the pop up color shirts you know a lot of pictures and scratching you know scratching some jeans make sure it's a very simple jeans or a 
uh, formal genes, but on genes or shaded genes and with having all those pixels on it. So uh, what happens is that you're trying to inter getting the interview for the, you had worked hard for it. So try to make a better impression with them and try to look good and smart as well, because uh, you know, your impression makes a long lasting experience for them because how you have been showcasing your resume, how you have spoke, how you are able to answer, how you're attending the interview, all these things uh, give an additional uh, you know, boost to your offer and you know, chances to getting hired. The next thing is about uh, being a good, be a good listener. Don't interrupt and talk too much. So this is quite important. I know sometimes when you get the question that you already know, you will be jumping to answer it. And we may, we may all get excited sometimes to answer it right away, but uh, you have to control your emotions, okay? Control your excitement, even though you know the answer, wait for it, let him complete the question, let the interviewer complete the question, take a 10 seconds break, think about the question he has asked and how you can answer it appropriately and place your answer. It's okay to take a break and answer it rather than saying a wrong answer or you know, accidentally you make a mistake out of it, okay? Then being con be, a, be confident in answering and ensure your answers are accurate and precise. Now, when I say be confident, that means uh, if you know something, right, you'll be very But sometimes when you see uh, you have half knowledge about it, maybe you feel difficulty or sometimes you forget and you're not able to answer confidently, but you have to ensure when you are giving the answer, you are confident about it without any doubt and you have to ensure your answers are accurate and precise. That means you give any statistics, you give any dates, you give, take any names, uh, you have to be very much accurate and precise about your answers so that uh, you are that, that does not raise any doubts to them. So second thing uh, about this is the next point. If you are not able to get the answer right, okay, you know the answer, but you're not able to put it in appropriate words and you're able, not able to get the numbers and dates and details, try to take an example of example if somebody asks you a question about tell me what is the impact of a data breach okay now answer like it will cost the typical answer would be like it will be a reputational loss it will have fines it will have brand and reputation it will have ipr loss like a lot of different losses that would constitute but if you're not able to get that word how would you phrase it okay this is an example again you're taking the yahoo as an example over here you will say like okay i've heard about this yahoo breach that has happened and let me take this example to you know uh, explain how the data breach has impacted. So, firstly, it has given a financial loss to the company because the value of the shares, the stocks went down. The company was devalued for very less money than it was. Second thing, uh, few, uh, because of this value loss, uh, people have lost the trust in the brand. So, that's one of the losses that can happen because if more people don't log in or use the product, uh, it'll, it'll value will decrease gradually. Second thing is about the amount they spent on recovering all those losses and also for the investigations, legal, uh, you know, authority for charges and also fines that they had to face, hefty fines that would be applicable for them because that time 500 million users, personal information loss was okay. But if that was a European day, customer information, if GDPR fines were, would have been charged heftily. So like this, you can take an example and frame your answer and explain it. So it's nothing wrong. Okay, I also miss out the answer sometimes. Everybody uh, gets it. How you answer at that scenario? How do you take an example and frame an answer? Is It's your choice. But if it helps you, you can practice on it. But you need to have appropriate information with you. You have to be up, uh, up to date with the latest things that is happening. That can help you a lot in answering these kind of scenarios. No, okay. So this is a common problem. Like uh, if somebody says, okay, uh, can you do a source code analysis, okay? Uh, you have not worked on coding. You don't know coding knowledge. You might have an interest in source code analysis. Uh, provided now, if, if you are interested only, don't say this because uh, you are getting an opportunity. If, on, if not only if you are interested to do it, you can say it as, I have worked on cybersecurity or different roles over my career for past two to three years, but I don't have any knowledge in source code analysis. Given the opportunity and time to learn it, I would definitely uh, look, uh, look forward to perform a source code analysis and I'm interested in it. So you are saying you don't know, but you are interested to learn. So how you frame an answer, depending on your interest, is depends on it. If you don't want to do a source code analysis, you are not good with coding, you're that, uh, then you can say, uh, you know, set the expectations clearly. That is a point number seven. You can say, 
I have worked in IT. I have worked in different roles. I'm not good with coding, so I don't have any knowledge about coding, but rest of the job I can take care except this. So this is again, you are saying no, but you are saying no in a different way. That's it. That you have knowledge, but you don't want to do it or you cannot do it because you don't have a knowledge or experience about it. Then my recruiter may say, okay, what if we provide training or if it is very simple, would you like to do it? Then you can take a uh, chance on whether to go with it or not. But either you can say straight up no, or you can say like, have this, but yeah, given a to do this. But if you don't know it directly, you can say, I don't know this. I, I don't want to do this because I don't have much knowledge about it. But how you represent your answer depends on you. Now, ask questions, but only valid ones. What do you mean that? Mean by that? Okay. When you are asking questions, you can ask where is the job location? What are your responsibilities? Does it require any shift? Does it require any shift rotations? Require any travel to different places? So all these are valid questions. And also sometimes you can ask the questions regarding like, uh, okay, what are my, what are, can you give me? about uh, what are the area of opportunities that I have or uh, are there any issues or mistakes. So all these things you can ask from the interviewer to get a feedback and an update whether you are doing good in a troll or not. Uh, sometimes you can ask like, okay, can you please tell, let me know if you have found any uh, issues or cons in, with respect to my profile that I can improve on and uh, genuinely they will give you a feedback which will be helpful for you to prepare uh, to, for the next interview and correct yourself. Then last thing is about don't be desperate, uh, uh, but do general follow up. So what I mean by this is like some people are very, very desperate to get the job. I understand you need a job very badly, but uh, it's not good to them, message them and follow up with them. Give it some time because there are hundreds of candidates they are interviewing and don't feel sad that uh, you are not being given called back or they didn't get back to you. Follow up weekly or uh, weekly once or weekly twice, just send a form or email to the interview is completed can i know the next update whether i mean or not so you can just there yeah, if you're in they'll get back to you or else they'll send a mail for you to look forward to other opportunities so uh, keep it a particular timeline you know once in a week is okay it's good if you want to twice in a week it's you know i, I can say it's abundant you can do twice in a week is also good but once in a week is uh, good enough now uh, what is the difference between a CV, cover letter, and resume? A lot of people put this on their resumes and they say this is, uh, they are confused, okay? Let me say why this is. So CV is like curriculum vitae. It is, uh, oh, what do they say? It's very long. It covers your entire career than static. So it is more than a page. The next is a cover letter. So cover letter is typically a one-page document. It consists of uh, what is your role, uh, which job you're applying for, and uh, how well your requirement suits this job. So you can go and Google it and you find a lot of cover letter examples. Resume is what typically people send. It's a, a one, uh, what is a one page detail. It's very, very short and it's highly customizable. And uh, it's just more, not more than a page. So a resume can be more than two pages also. Sometimes people uh, have a huge experience and knowledge. So they have two page resume uh, CVs as well. But resume is typically a one page. You can just make it crisp and short. Okay, going forward to the next one. How to handle the challenges in life? Okay, uh, so this is a major part. I'll cover it up like how to handle the challenges or how to focus on these things. Uh, so this is not only for the freshers, for everybody that is applicable for. And uh, let me explain it in detail for you what it means. So uh, here we are. So how to handle the challenges? Okay. So let me start off with the first thing that we have here. That is on uh, focus on how to balance the work. So so for example, okay, if you are working in rotational shift, or if you're working with the travel uh, in jobs that include travel, right? Now you want to prepare for a cybersecurity job or any other job that you want to move in the career. So you have to balance your work, your personal life, and also the training period. For example, if you take a CEA certification, probably it might take a month or two months or three months, depending on your knowledge, to clear the certification. OSCP is a little bit complex. CISSP is more complex. So you have to plan appropriately and balance the work in terms of preparing yourself for your next job change or the role that you're performing. And whichever the job you're going, you have to be prepared for the uh, For example, if you are into audit, you have a lot of travel included. If you are into you know, SIM, 
then you have rotational shift on that you have to balance your work in terms of uh, your uh, upskilling yourself or the other courses that you're performing or the job change whatever the preparation you need you need to make sure that you have time for that the next thing is about how letting it go at times matters so this matters a lot i tell this person to everybody sometimes let go of things you can't hold on to the things that crumbling you or it's pulling you down okay so you can't be knowledge let's accept the and win every time so if you are you know if you lose on something it's okay it's fine everybody so what matters next so sometimes if you are not happy with your current job or if you are having some issues personally or you know professionally right okay you have to let go of those things which is uh, you know which is becoming a hard line and you know go for the next step or achieve something in life so it's okay everybody has been through it so uh, you have to accept the fact you have to let go of things and you have to keep your head up and keep moving forward so now the second thing the third thing is about how to remain focused so this is very important in our job profiles especially like uh, you have a lot of distractions in work from home we have distractions a personal life a professional life we have a lot of problems we have in life so we always have this diversions across us so but you have to remain focused you have to upskill yourself you have to learn continuously you have to keep an eye about upcoming changes for example as i said now the latest job changes have been increased in cyber security in certain roles and certain roles have been uh, growing to be less so you have to keep an eye about the surrounding things what is the changes happening in the cyber security uh, what is the new technology that is coming in which application testing is going to be extensively done in the future for example zoom zoom has found this vulnerabilities right so now uh the people who are who have are is developing an application with respect to the video conferencing uh those companies have a good potential but again for them the security is a main concern right now so uh there's lot of growth in terms of these areas which industry is like cloud saas product companies have grown a lot in this time so you have to keep an eye on the industry changes that is happening and upskill yourself so if you take 5 years ago cloud was not a big deal okay now if you are a security professional you want to get into a cyber security role you should also know about the cloud because many of the companies have their hybrid infrastructure set up or cloud infrastructure so you have to upskill yourself you have to learn continuously and you have to have uh, analysis about the market and you have to be very very determined and focused when you're doing that job i'm not saying that every day you have to be busy if you're working from 9 to 5 be focused in that 9 to 5 period and when you come to home you even you study for one hour or your course whatever the preparations you be completely focused for that one hour without any distractions that will help you a lot Mm, that going for the next one keeping ahead in the curve so what is it keeping ahead in the curve mean why is it so important uh, so for example you have a lot of competitions around you right now uh, think about it before on all for security probably 10 people is talking like 50 is coming in in couple of years there will be hundreds coming in for the same road so if you have to be ahead of the curve you have to be the better than everybody else you have to know your value you have to know your strengths and where you fit in so uh you can't you know sometimes exercise your weakness or uh, grow your you know uh, strengthen your weaknesses so you have to focus on your key strengths because you're already experienced you can't go ahead and correct them but you know your strengths you play around with it you uh, increase your strength you exercise on it you see where you fit in few people also had questions regarding uh, okay i'm going to a particular job or a job profile for the interview they are asking me to do pen Uh, penetration testing with respect to iOS or Android, but I am a web app developer, a web app tester. I don't know about Android or iOS. Should I take it, or how should I answer it? First and foremost thing, if you don't know it, it's directly you acknowledge it. Like, okay, you have worked on web development, but you don't have knowledge in that. But if they say that they will provide you time and training, then you go for it. Or else, if you don't fit in that area after going it, it will be very hard to struggle in between those Android and iOS testers. Uh, for because. they are very skilled in that and you are a very newbie to the profile even though you have four years in web app penetration testing for the ios and mobile app penetration testing you are quite new and you have to compete with all those people to grow in that role so sometimes yes you have to see where you fit in whether it's suitable or not whether you are prepared for that or not and whether they are giving you the time to be prepared so that is that's what matters matters the most the next thing is about always give your best in everything uh this like vivekananda said right even if you sweep you should be sweeping like you are the best sweeper in the world so if you're doing any job it might be small or big any job it might be make sure you give your best that nobody else can do it better than you and that will always uh, give you rewards and recognitions in life 
so even though you are not giving recovery rewards and the recognitions you are not getting it you are not getting the recognition fine no problem let it go you be the best in what you do on some time it will definitely pay you off okay the next thing is about references as i've already shared so here are a couple of references which uh, websites you can visit and all those things and as i said i will be performing the activity and other things okay and let me show you for the activity before i proceed over here okay and uh, i'll take a typical example okay this is a linkedin job portal as you see uh, everybody were complaining like okay what if there are jobs enough jobs or not if you see all these jobs if i see it's all like one week ago one day ago three weeks ago within this month even in under the lockdown period right okay if you say in phone pay they are uh, you know hiring for application security engineer it was posted just 10 hours ago so if you see this right you will understand like lot of uh, uh, companies are hiring and recruiting even in this amidst this lockdown period and quarantine situation the covid 19 situation still lot of jobs are uh, uh, posted and they are still hiring around so all these jobs you see it's all fresh all new jobs it's not uh, outdated or it's not a one month or three months before jobs all new jobs so all this within india itself so similarly for each and every location if you see there are a lot of recruitment hiring is still going on i'll take a formal example for this okay let me take one sample okay okay let me take two samples for that matter this is one i'll take and this one i'll take okay let me showcase you some couple of things so this is security consultant okay risk and compliance so here if you see risk and compliance they are talking about uh, iso 27001 covid privacy regulations pci dss and let me say you these are a lot not related to coding at all this is completely with respect to it infrastructure security it consists of lot of uh, hardening controls that you have to test uh, uh you know the privacy regulations that you have to know iso 27000 standards and you are still a part of a security consultant role and you are part of security team but you are not doing any uh, penetration testing over here it's purely risk and compliance against a, a part of your information security role as i said so you need to have the certifications such as cisa cissp iso 27001 la then again you have uh, any knowledge about these things and client management is also they are preferring okay then again they are expecting about application control audit background so if you see these are the roles they are expecting for uh, in this particular security compliance and risk role now if the same time if i take for phone pay and as an example right now if you see here they are expecting for a manager role so i don't uh, you know specify that but yeah what are the things that they are expecting over here they are looking for web application mobile application infrastructure so you have a web application and mobile application pen testing knowledge then this is the one that is suitable for you because they are looking for that particular skill set with a masters degree and they are looking for eight plus years of uh, security engineering so if i see i have a particular skills mentioned in my linkedin profile let me show you that okay this is my profile and here in the skills okay skills and endorsements i have mentioned couple of skills that i know or i am very much familiarized with okay among these skills if you see they are asking for web applications computer science infrastructure team management so these are all a possible match okay again in your resume when you're targeting this company particularly right you have to make sure you have the relevant keywords on your resume for example they are looking for web application mobile infrastructure app sec testing can words on your resume when you're mentioning in your skill set i mean just for the uh, heck of it you have if you have right, you rather use similar keywords that represent that you have appropriate knowledge for this role now similarly if you are going for this role security consultant and risk compliance role you have to mention those skills appropriately those certifications and the knowledge that you possess and uh, whether the audit background if you are from how did you or for how long did you perform in that activity you have to mention it appropriately so this is how you have to analyze okay and uh, let me take another example uh, let me go here for the jobs okay fine this is a product sector security this might be interesting let me see okay here they have detailedly mentioned that you need to have any one of these certifications and they're looking for somebody with you know understanding of cryptography encryption knowledge uh, public infrastructure also they are looking for coding if you see here they clearly mentioned experience with software development if you say 
you're from a software developer, but you want to get into security, these are the ones that could help you to fit in. And uh, if you have a software development knowledge and you have also security knowledge, uh, and you know, Hacktiv is also one of the companies who ex train you on source code analysis. So you have that all those knowledge, right? Then this is the right role for you. You have the certification, you have the core, you know, uh, the basic requirements that they have mentioned, all those keywords, then you're good with it. So you can see over here, they're looking for cloud sec network security, but I don't know the different application security certification authority. I don't have much knowledge in these areas. So my skill sets are not completely relevant to it. So the more skill set I have match over here, then my role is more suitable for this job. So that's how we can judge from this LinkedIn. Now, if similarly, if I want to go for Naukri, right? It's one of the best roles out there. Even Naukri, you need to maintain your profile. You need to fill it for 100%. Based on your profile strength, you get recommendations and alerts. And on that, if you see there are a lot of openings still started recently. If you see all these openings have been posted recently, one day ago, this before this. So like a lot of companies are still hiring and still recruiting. And you can see the annual pay they're looking for, uh, for a five to eight years experience, they're ready to pay around eight to 10 lakhs. That's uh, how much they're interested to pay. Uh, this is company specific. It's not like all the companies would pay you the same. And I was telling you about pay scale, right? So this is a pay scale website that I've been mentioning. And I have a sample search industry, uh, search history, okay? Now I'm looking for a penetration tester job in India, particularly for Chennai, Tamil Nadu, and an average salary ranges from, uh, it's like 510,000 dollars. So, I mean, sorry, 510,000 rupees. So if you see here, it's like uh, for pressure, it might start from two lakh onwards. It might be three lakh also. Uh, the average is five lakhs and the maximum is 10 lakhs that you can get, okay? And this is about on the right-hand side, these are all like, uh, what are the type of people that most uh, rec uh, no, that, that have been recruiting more recently. So there is 353% experienced professionals they're looking for, mid-level or 94%. Early care and entry level, actually they're not looking much because uh, mostly experienced people and experience doesn't mean you have to have a cybersecurity experience completely. You might have a different background, but it adds on value to your current role, then definitely they would consider it. Then for example, okay, the most thought of the uh, roles are web security and encryption then the vulnerability assessment and penetration testings comes up uh, then the remaining roles so if you see this is the gender breakdown so number of roles uh, or how many people are working already existing in that role are 93 percent male and 6.4 percent female so girls have a huge amount of opportunity if they like to get into cyber sec there are a lot of opportunities they definitely have and this is about the popular skills for penetration testing and their salaries clearly mentions and this is in terms of growth. If you see from 10 to 19 years, a person in pen testing can uh, earn up to 20 lakhs. And as a fresher, he can start from three lakhs. Again, it depends because if you see the monetary value changes every year, this is as per this in the current year, but compared to the future, yeah, as the money value raises, the package also would raise it accordingly. So if you see the pay difference by location, so Pune is uh, paying more uh, because of regional difference and Bangalore and Mumbai and Pune are the ones who are hiring and recruiting like Chennai also. So cost of living by city, okay? Here it's more, 55% more and Chennai is pleased, okay, where I'm in right now. And years of experience and uh, where they start from in early career and for an entry level person, uh, like entry level people are like early career 56.8%. Entry level are quite less, the blue ones, if you see here. Then you have major of early career that is between one to three years or three to, uh, six years, I can say, and mid career is quite less. Uh, here it is, mid career is on like 16%, which consists of about uh, anywhere between six to or seven to ten years, uh, seven to ten to twelve years, I can say, and about ten years are experienced, highly experienced person. They are on like three percent. So uh, three percent is where our chart would sit in, where the CISOs, deputy CISOs, security managers would sit in, and the senior directors would sit in, in that experienced role. So this is the pay scale website. Go ahead, explore it. Uh, you can sign up and you can get information about different companies. And uh, here is something called find your market worth. So sometimes if you're in security role, you don't know how much you can expect from the next company. You can click on this, you can, because it is very intuitive, it asks you a lot of questions. You can put in your job profile, company details, roles, all those details. Then it will give a particular value, like what is your current value in the market based on this analysis and surveys that it has taken. So uh, that's how it works. So it's a very beautiful website. I would definitely suggest you to go ahead and take a look into it. Now, uh, we have other question from, okay. One of the questions we are getting into is like, uh, 
uh, transition from one cybersecurity domain to another, what is the most blooming area? Okay, fine. Uh, we have a question with respect to this. Let me showcase you that. And let me answer this part. Okay. Or another, and what is the most booming area? And is it a good time to do a management certification like CISSP or improving technical skills as per market demand? Let me answer your first question. What are the recruiters expecting as of now? Okay. It depends on company to company. If uh, at this moment, if you're looking for market growth or market uh, uh, demand, Payscale will give you that uh, information. See, it says web security and encryption is the most sought after job right now. But this demand is not going to be constant because we have a lot of web application, mobile applications launched recently. Uh, so that's the reason why we are having a surge in the growth of requirement and skills that are uh, you know uh, most sought after. Vulnerability assessment and penetration testing again. Uh, so this skill is also highly paid and it's more softer because uh, they have to perform vulnerability analysis for the infrastructure for their application and perform web and uh, normal penetration testing. If I say normal, it means for endpoints, for servers, for connected devices. When I say web security or uh, mobile applications, it's for Android, iOS, and web applications. So there's a quite little bit of difference among that. Apart from that, you have other roles like IT audit roles uh, and all those roles. There also you have a major skill requirement. But as I said, currently, this is the one they are looking for more in the market. Second thing, you have asking question about certification. See, if you want to go for certification of management level, right? If you want to CISSP, you should be like, why have to do CISSP as of now? So if you're going to a role like manager level, because CISSP has a basic requirement that you need to have an experience of five years at least to get a CISSP certification. If you have that, then you can have CISSP, which will boost your profile into uh, roles such as, you know, to getting into a manager roles, okay? But most of the CISSPs are done, uh, people who are uh, looking for roles like CISOs, directors, and other various bigger roles in the security industry. Because to become an auditor, you have something called CISA, CISA from ISACA. You have CRISC, you have CISM, that is also valid for becoming a security manager. And also you have uh, for CISSP, which is the highest level certification there is exist because every after five years, I mean, you need to keep maintaining the certification, renew it, you have to be thorough with it. And also like if you're going for CISSP, it's not quite easy. It's the most toughest certification out there. So you have to take your time thoroughly prepare for it and then go for it. Or else you have some other certifications, which is easy to clear. Uh, and if, I'm not saying that it's easy, but compared to CISSP, it's quite easier like CISA or CISM or CRISC, whichever is available in from ISACA. So again, we have got a question from one of, one of the candidate, uh, how to get job in this pandemic situation? I am into information security compliance domain and finding difficult to get the jobs in same as of now. Okay, uh, because of, I mean, like I have just represented here right now. Okay, there are a lot of job opportunities opening uh, and a lot of opportunities are still open right now. You can look into these profiles from LinkedIn. If you're in LinkedIn, I would ask you to please explore LinkedIn. Or if you have profile in Naukri, please go ahead and check in the Naukri because uh, based on my profile experience, they are giving around 34 jobs. But since you mentioned that you're from information security compliance, let me give a demonstration of your requirement right here so that it will be helpful for you and others as well. Okay, I'm clicking over here for the uh, sake of a testing purpose. I'm considering the country as India. Okay, I want compliance. Okay, when I say compliance, I can add ISO uh, 27001 and I can add PCI, I can add GDPR. So I will look at how I'm working because I'm adding more keywords to get more search results for compliance. Now I'm adding IT audit. And what are the other compliance you have in mind? If you know HIPAA, yeah. And if you need privacy, yeah. So I'm adding as many keywords as possible to get major hits. And this is only for India. If you see right now, how many job or hits we have? Okay, we have Okay, I choose Bangalore. Okay, you see there are like 55 compliance requirements just in Bangalore alone. And let me look at the freshness of the job. 
mm-hmm. freshness let me select within the last 30 days when the lockdown has been started so you can see there are 25 compliance roles that has been opened and you know kpmg is a big four and they are recruiting given right now and let me see when they have posted this job and this is for 1 to 6 years is quite suitable for your role you can check see 13 days ago so they have just opened this role 13 days ago and uh, they have the compliance role requirement open and i think there are already like a uh, lot of applicants there like there are six openings in the same company and there are like 554 46 applicants for this so if you see that if your role is fitting into this and i am saying like you know this can be competed easily if you have the majority of uh, your experience added to this okay now at the same time you have uh, one to six years let me check what else do we have eight years it depends on your experience i know you are saying like uh, three years okay here is two to seven years this is one of them okay it's 10 days ago and job applicants are like 67 this quite a few people have added and if you see this is one of the roles in nokri posted for ibm and they're looking for as i said these are keywords they want to understand whether you know the networking whether you know the password management and you know the compliance gaps and analysis that you perform and also they are expecting a little bit of programming experience but if it suits you well then you can go for it if you feel that okay this is too much for you you can skip it up and you try for other job because i'm saying to skip because if you don't feel that you fit into that job it's not good to try it on and uh, bad when you are not selected so rather choose something that suits your profile the most okay, experience i did zero years Three years. Okay, everything that comes over here are three years. So anything with respect to your profile that interests you, you can apply for it, and all the best for your career. And as I say, this is only for Nokri, Insta. dot com, all those areas. You can still go ahead and try. I'm another question right here. How can cybersecurity startups should take their business ahead during this? Okay, I understand for cybersecurity startups it's quite difficult because they were not prepared. them have not invested much on the vpn and other things but uh, there are some startups which have gained a lot lot boost because uh, a lot of growth and opportunities uh, because most of startups you know like uh, they are not working in a normal infrastructure is like coming to office is mandatory or something like that yeah work from home might be working for them second thing is that how good is their product whether the product is depending on their daily turnovers or something like that or whether they support their clients it's well and good if not it's a very very tough time because nobody were prepared for this not even us not the government nobody were prepared for this situation so for startups it's a struggling time i can say but if their infrastructure is like they can work from anywhere and the clients are okay with it and they can perform and deliver the content then not a problem at all for the startups as well in terms of cyber security if their siem and all you know the like sock centers cannot have employees outside the organization they have to sit inside the sock center and they have to work but due to this situation they are not able to do it probably most of them are giving vdi access with copy paste restrictions and other things some way they are trying to figure it out to have the security controls even they are not in the office but still getting the job done by implementing those security restrictions uh, so that that can help the employees to work okay uh, that is one of the problem for, for uh, startup companies okay as pandemic uh, as pandemic is here lot of issues have come in personal and professional want to know how to get a job to those who don't have certifications like OSAP and CSSP uh, as i said you have a lot of options right now if you don't have a certification like OSAP or CEH if you want to get a job you need to showcase your skill okay when i say showcase your skill you have to perform some activity like capture the flag hack the box or uh, show your hacker own ranking you find, show your bug ids that you have reported but make sure when you are finding a bug you make a report of it and showcase it it might be anything that in security that you are trying to do if you are talking about it audit right in it audit also there are a lot of things that you can test showcase the controls how you can place them what is your analysis what is your blog and what is your thought process on how you can come to a conclusion so it's never ending okay so if you don't have a certificate as i said if you have a financial concern you have a problem in getting certification please go ahead and do a report so that so that you can showcase you have the hands on implementation or hands on knowledge experience uh, also along with the uh, skill that you claim that you have because we need something to validate your skill 
certification is only there to validate your skill it's not going to say that you know if you have a certificate you know everything that's not how it is it's only to validate that you have the skill or you know that skill because if i'm an it auditor right if i hire a penetration tester from any third party services company and i, I want to get the penetration testing then the first question you i ask is that is the person is competent to do this job when i say competence they might say that okay he knows penetration testing but i would ask for to is he certified profession professional like is your oscp or ce certified to allow him to let him do the penetration testing in my environment if not then i might not be convinced if they say no this guy is then having a hacker own ranking he has bug bounty he has done he has done so many uh, bug ids and everything he is pursuing his certification then probably i might a little bit convinced i because company's reputation not the person reputation if i want to go with the person by trusting him i need to make sure that he is a certified one okay is it possible or is it appropriate switching career after 5 years of experience in core blockchain yes it is possible because certain roles in security requires blockchain knowledge okay certain products that is that will test the security of that blockchain Uh, architecture that they have developed whether there are any privacy concerns whether any security loopholes whether there are any gaps and this is not only for blockchain i'm saying this for typically everybody okay i'll just show you what my so that i'll get you an idea because i don't want to get you convinced there are a lot of uh, people that i would like to showcase also apart from my profile if you see i started as a resilient resolution expert i mean it support and then within one year and one month i moved into senior associate consultant i was into vapt and p opportunity that provided by the company looking at my skill because i showcased it in the interview that i'm capable of doing a penetration testing activity and uh, all those things then i showcased that i'm able to do a risk and compliance and pci ds because the cpisi certification also i did iso 27001 and also i had to go through uh, my seniors by taking a complete test about my knowledge in terms of pci ds and uh, I, i went through that test and i cleared it so that i was eligible to do that role then i moved into ey again here i'm a technologist consultant it doesn't have nothing to do with vapt it has nothing to do with pci ds it's completely controlled the audits i'm doing cyber security framework assessments and audits based on regulatory requirements i did uh, you know uh, uh, like data leakage protection audits i did soc 1 soc 2 which is is i also have done audit like it's completely different role I had lot of experience lot of knowledge and combined together i worked in product based i worked in uh, payment uh, product companies and banking companies financial companies i worked in manufacturing plants insurance sector uh, i worked on isms audits as well and like it's a vast experience that i gained within a short amount of time because i was in a consulting role so a consulting role helps a lot in terms of building your career and profile so uh, whatever the you know background you are from if the companies are ready to hire you because your previous experience adds a value in the role that you are joining then definitely yes because if you are from a blockchain and you are going for a cyber security in blockchain or blockchain development then your profile is valid or your previous profile or experience is carried on here also if you are going for a forensic expert being a blockchain uh, developer i don't think your knowledge would be much applicable because they are not doing forensic on blockchain so there it might become as a uh irrelevant uh, experience but still they would consider sometimes because if they get a opportunity to do forensic analysis on a blockchain probably yeah or else it will be absolute over there okay next question i have is guidance on how to start career in cyber security step by step okay will knowledge regarding iso 27000 framework help in this sounds good okay if you want to start a career in cyber security step by step how should you start okay so to start a career in cyber security uh, let me give you a quick hint okay let me open my screen see right here right you have a entry level you have a mid level national level you can be a si analyst that is a security analyst right here you can be a forensic by doing a chfi or you can do ecsa and you can be a security analyst uh you can be a vulnerability assessor penetration tester if you have that knowledge certifications you can be instant respond like a cryptography and other security consulting jobs you can do that's the first step you take again as i said you need to have the skill you need to have the knowledge you need to have the certification or for it now then you move into the mid level then you become an auditor you become a 
you know, a policy or a compliance manager, you become a security architect, something like that. And you build your career on the go until you become a CISO or a director or a VP, whatever is in that segment of the senior management level. So that's one thing. And every step you have to upskill. So for example, here, if you do one certification and the mid level, you made a very strong certification than the previous one. Okay. If for example, I'll give a typical example. Uh, you have a CEH for the entry level. Now to go for the mid-level penetration tester, you need a OSCP or else uh, you can't go above that. Now, if you want to be a security manager or something like that here, you have to be OSCE or OSE or even you can become a CISSP and get into this role. So see, the certification also grows uh, more tougher and tougher and more valuable when you're moving up the ladder. And your skills also will vary because whatever I learned two years ago is absolute right now. Now there are new vulnerabilities, new issues, new kinds of web applications, new architecture in the web application. So I have to always upskill and be up to date in the uh, IT or whatever the market is going, wherever the market is going. So that's one thing. ISO 27000 will help you in terms of security auditing. You can start as a security analyst. There are ISO 27000 analysts who work under the auditor to do the analyst activity, preparing policies, performing the evidence, the verification, validation, and uh, doing a policy review or updating the policies and like a lot of analyst level activities also. ISO 27000 will definitely help you. It's a global standard for uh, ISO certification. And uh, I would recommend everybody who are interested for ISO certification, please go ahead. It gives you a lot of knowledge about information security. It's not cyber security. It'll give you about IT security or information security that we call. It covers a lot of aspects in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, data in different formats. It gives importance to uh, people, uh, it gives importance to loading and uh, other areas, uh, fire drills, BCP and DR management, people management, all those things are covered as a part of ISO 27001. So it's a really good place to start off from if you want to be a, an audit role or even for just for the knowledge sake, you can just do it. Okay. How to create our profile in any job portal or LinkedIn to get the site of recruiters? Okay. To get this, Okay, what you have to do is first you need to create a profile. Make sure you add the content appropriately and you have no uh, you know, issues with respect to the LinkedIn profile. Here it will show some bar or it will say some concerns like your profile is not complete. Make sure you complete it. Similarly, it's the same thing even in uh, Nopi, as I said. You have to have this 100% bar. You need to fill all your information, keep it up to date, uh, add your skills and all those requirements. Mention it everything particularly. So if you see my LinkedIn profile, for example, I've added my certifications my skills, uh, then I have my courses that I've done apart from course certification. These are all the courses that I've uh, completed. These are my projects that I've done in among my uh, four and a half years of experience. Uh, and it might be repetitive, but I mentioned it only once so that it's not repetitive over there. Then you can add your publication. I have written an article on uh, social media banking and its risk. So I have a publication. So I added my uh, article over here. So, and whatever the scores and other things you have, you can go ahead and complete your profile so that it will get the site of recruiters. And also, as I said, you need to make very, very be sure about the skills that you add here, whether it's getting the hits or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, next thing uh, here we have how to clear interview, what to prepare when you have two years of experience. I'm confusing that from where should I have to apply? As I said, if you're experienced and you have to clear the interview, you should know uh, which role you are targeting, whether it's relevant to your skills or whether you're prepared for it. And then you have to apply for it. And also when you're applying, make sure your resume is appropriate or you know uh, it's modified as per the role requirement. You might be from a different experience, but you are applying for a new role, then you have to uh, change your resume accordingly. That will help you out. Okay, now the last is, I'm in SOC for last three years, don't know, I want, uh, don't, and now I want to move to pen testing. I don't know how to do the movement. As I said, you have been in SOC for three years. It's nice. When you want to do pen testing, then you have to have penetration testing knowledge. It's as simple as that. Uh, you need to have a certification or a knowledge. Uh, only then you can. If you don't have an, a certification, as I said, you go for any other report, you perform some activities, show you, showcase your uh, practical ex knowledge that you have on a report. That would make it. Now, how do you start career in threat management and web, uh, web, sec web secure code review? Test. Okay, if you want to do that, first thing you need to understand is how web development works, how a uh, web application works. You need to understand the basics. So I'm been telling this to a lot of people 
people enroll to courses right they jump directly into bug bounty programs they jump directly into penetration testing they're so curious and eager to learn but that's how but that's not how it's going to work okay you have to build your basics uh, you have to build from the basics and you have to be very strong in the basics. So if you want to have a penetration test, then first you have to know how this computer works. What are the components inside my computer? How the network works? How does the packet flow? Because of these things, you will be able to understand how to do a penetration testing in a network level or endpoint level, how an antivirus works, how a firewall works, how does it function? These things are important. These are the basics. I'm not asking you to learn basics, everything. Similarly, if I want to say about knowledge uh, in terms of uh, any course, like CompTIA A plus, Net plus, Linux plus, Server plus, uh, Security plus. Like these are the five things corely you need uh, for a VAPT role. Now, coming for the web application pen testing or a source code, you need to understand. Understand. I'm not saying that you need to be a professional. You need to understand different programming languages, how it works, like PHP, uh, how HTML5, CSS, JavaScript function, how are the Ajax, what is JSON, and how these forms have been implemented inside the website why when you write a SQL query, where the data is fetching from, why it happens only in a particular form, why not it has happening in other uh, fields when you type a SQL query. You need to understand these concepts, why we are doing this, why we are putting this query, uh, where the data is fetching from, how this website is vulnerable, how can I call this website, how should I know which server it is running on, uh, what is its backend functionality. For these things, you have to be thorough in basics. Only with the basics, you can be able to be a better cybersecurity professional or else it's gonna be, uh, what you say, playing blind. That's all. You don't know what it's gonna do, how it functions, but you're just blindly hitting the air. It doesn't work like that. So I would definitely recommend you, everybody, if you want to come into information security or cybersecurity, be thorough with your basics. I'm not asking you to be expert in that, but have the basic knowledge of how things work. That's all I ask. Okay, uh, we have a next question. Switch from malware software development to cybersecurity, pursued masters in InfoSec, got C, uh, security plus and CEH, yet fi uh, finding it difficult to get an opportunity. Like literally, I find no openings for budding young minds, no professional work experience in cybersecurity, but a strict enthusiast of the same. Okay, and uh, yeah, this uh, person is pretty serious. He's also raised concerns like market says, cybersecurity jobs are at peak and there is a huge employment gap in the field. My question is, if no one is willing to give opportunities to the passionate professionals, how would the gap cover? Are the opportunities absent due to COVID for freshers are not given opportunities as employers back away from training? This I'm uh, emphasizing again and again, I have said this a lot of times, okay? You say that you have a skill, but as a recruiter, I, I cannot believe that because I don't know whether you have a skill or not. And while sending you, uh, okay, when you are adding your details, your certification, your course knowledge, you have to specify your security requirements. Oh, you might have 10 certifications like uh, A plus, Net plus. In your resume in your course completed uh, the certifications you have done, please mention your security certifications at the top. You mentioned your security uh, projects that you have done in the top. Uh, so it should be in that ascending or descending order. Uh, so next thing is about if you don't have, you have certification, okay, uh, and you have saying that you're finding difficulty, just make sure whether the jobs that you're hitting is not blind because they have particular requirements for the job. You have to make sure you apply for those requirements only. If you don't have that, and if your resume is not having those keywords, probably they're not getting a, a very good search results because once you upload your resume in the job portal, right? Search for a particular, they don't point out a particular candidate. They search for the skill, people with ISO, people with PCI DSS. They use the keywords and whichever the resume gets the maximum number of hits, it comes in the first search results or sooner result. It comes in the top 10 or whatever, however it works. So if you have those major skills required for the job, you get most hits, you get more visibility, the recruiters can view your profile and get back to you. If you don't have those keywords or you don't have that skill set, then it would be hard for you to get back, for them to get back or identify that you have that role, uh, if you have that skill or not required for that role. The second thing is, if you don't have a certificate, you can go for the report. Doesn't mean that if you have certificate, you can uh, still stay with it, no issues. They can still perform some activities and you can make a report of it and you can showcase, you can write a blog, you can write an article, anything that would benefit you 
or that could represent that you have knowledge will definitely be an answer. So don't lose hope. Uh, keep up your faith and passion. Resume more strong, build your profile more strong. And whenever you get an opportunity, you give your best and make sure you give your 100%. Okay, we have a lot of comment questions flowing in. Okay, I have one. Uh, one already working in cybersecurity, which course I have to do, and like a lot of other questions are similar to it. Which course I have to do? What I have to do? Uh, like, uh, should I go for CISSP? I'm saying this again, people. Like, uh, you have to ensure whether it is required for you or not at that point in time. Like, you are in cybersecurity, you are experienced professional profile in that. Now you are experienced, that means you have to go for a higher certification, which is CISSP. CEH is a basic entry that you would get to get into you know, uh, penetration testing world. Now you have to go for a higher certification. You have five plus years, go for CISSP. Nobody's stopping you, but yeah, it's still riskier. It's still cost uh, the tougher ones are uh, certification out there. If you want to go for it, do it. It's for your knowledge sake. Don't just do it for the job. Don't just do it to get uh, attention or don't just do it to get better pay. Yes, this will result in all of that, but do it out of passion. Do it if you're very much interested into it or take your time, prepare it, gain the knowledge. Gaining knowledge is the most important part of your uh, uh, life and career. I can, if you have knowledge, you can get any certification, you can clear any interview, you can be very much sharp. Imagine I'm giving this webinar with 4.5 years experience because of knowledge, not because of the certifications. I could go ahead and take CISSP by preparing for it and it will validate my skill. But I'm waiting to complete my five years, gain more knowledge, gain more experience. I've been into consulting field, I've been into product field, I've been with different industries. This all is possible because of the knowledge I gained by working in those areas. It didn't come up because I did a course, it didn't come up because I did a certification. Let me clarify this, security is not a job, like you are a very good penetration tester, you are a big bug bounty hunter, they'll pay you 25 lakhs right out of uh, the college the first interview itself no security is a role that comes uh, you know in a very 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 long journey so in security your skill your certification your experience matters together you will get only certain knowledge based on experience couple of days ago i got a couple of uh, questions like uh, you know i want to i'm getting questions about endpoint security and network security i have already experienced but i'm not able to answer it where where i should go ahead and gain these skills i'm saying like network security is a very very big role because you have a lot of devices you have fortnite you have cisco you have juniper you have barracuda and you, are, you have sophos uh you have routers hubs and also you have uh, now cloud architecture where you have security groups and virtual gateways vpns like it's too much you can't get all this knowledge just by going to a video or sitting with a uh, get okay and endpoint security also you have antivirus different kinds of antivirus you have uh, data leakage prevention dlps you have endpoint proxy uh, uh, proxy agents which will protect your computer you have endpoint vpn security and you have other uh, email security firewall like there are a lot of things that would make endpoint secure. So you can't get knowledge about all this. Uh, just going to a particular channel or a video or just get everything. You have knowledge by working and gaining hands-on experience. So since I was in consulting field, I work with various clients. I work with various products. I have seen a lot of different architectures, different cloud architectures, different endpoint security solutions, different network solutions. Uh, and how they have designed and implemented this on the ground. It is completely different. Because of this, I'm able to, uh, in a product-based company, when I moved in, I was able to identify the issues, I was able to give my inputs, I was able to improvise on them. But if I was a fresher, definitely I'll tell you, it's not easy. I'm not gonna get this knowledge anywhere else apart from. You will get the salary that you deserve through the experience, through the skills that you gain and the certifications that you possess. That's gonna be, uh, as I can be very true and fair in this particular part, you will not get a salary just like that because, or you'll not get into bigger roles just like that because you have a certification. You need to have the experience along with it and also different industries or whatever the products that you have worked with. Okay, a few people have questions about uh, embedded and IoT security. Again, it's a 
completely different course you have to have knowledge of assembly level language you need to know embedded computing you need to know how iot works only then you can get into that role okay and few people have uh, questions about how to prepare for acp uh, as i said hacktivists have a lot of courses they also provide uh, you know courses with respect to iot they have pro preparations prepared for oac particularly but oacp is a very long it's a very long journey you need to have a lot of skills but uh, as a part of hacktivists we can give you guidance you know we have a lot of courses that you can do uh, and gain the knowledge that is required for your oscp and again for oscp you have to do some labs and activities and gain uh, the certification but knowledge is very important because oscp is not also not a easy examination okay so hope i have answered all your questions uh, if you have any questions left out please do feel free to reach out to me so that i can answer it let me see if anybody is still waiting to get the answer oh that question okay okay here we go uh i have i have related to what things i need to add interview should be trained for security yes i have addressed this now please let okay now as i said endpoint and network security we can't learn everything at one point but yes you can gain the knowledge about how what are the different endpoint securities what are the different solutions and how they work and how it is implemented for example ips where would you place it uh, the firewall before the dmz after the dmz how would you place it where would you place it like this kind of questions you would you can go ahead and you can get the information from the internet if learn the architecture to see how they have placed these network devices similarly for endpoint security different endpoint security solutions how do they work how do they function why we do why do we use it and what are the configurations or features that is available to enforce it and some features if you see you don't have to buy a solutions or existing solution itself to enhance it so you know that's one thing and uh, minimum skills for cssp as i said you have to go to cssp website it has uh, eight domains and each domain has a very very deep information like it's like taking up a master's exam i can say that for sure you have a lot of subjects you have a lot of domains that you have to cover and uh, to do a cssp you need to gain knowledge in a lot of different things easy task but yeah you need to spend time you need to understand very good knowledge on different domains okay what about the less experienced people how can i switch from pen testing to grc audit profile as i observed uh, it requires me of 5 to 7 years of experience what about i have been from audit as i said i worked in vapt for one year then i moved into pci dss audit assessments then in ey i directly joined into it audit it didn't take me more than one year or one and a half year so i got from penetration testing role to uh, audit role only by perform one thing is i did iso 27001 certification one thing is that second thing to become an it audit role i have to change my perspective on how i look at things it's not going to be always an attack perspective now things change if there is a vulnerability i have to look at all the compensatory controls what is the risk who is the threat and how it will how it will be constituting like a risk exploiting a vulnerability how how this will be uh, a major issue whether there are any compensatory controls that can remediate it or bring down the risk value so audit requires a different uh, mindset different perception a different way of looking at things that you can get yeah a few companies also it might be not the big fours it might be some smaller companies also if you get an opportunity to get into an audit uh so 27000 more or cisa the either of these two certifications will definitely help you to move from penetration testing role into an audit role if you have that they understand that you have that uh, uh, you know thought process of being in a doing an it audit and remaining things you can learn on the go that's your, that's how i can help you to get through this but if i have more queries anybody has any questions or queries you can connect me through linkedin i'll be there to answer your queries or you can connect me through this group and let me uh, complete this session thank you for everyone for joining and asking all those questions i was really i really enjoyed the session and i'm happy to answer your questions hope i have clarified your doubts and queries if you have any concerns or questions in future feel free to reach out to me and uh, hacktivist have uh, how can hacktivist help you in terms of your career and your opportunities and this is the course that they are providing for freshers for SIEM analysts and they have all the lab and all the training set up done so if somebody is interested as a fresher to get into SIEM role 
or penetration testing role you can choose uh, sim or penetration testing and knowledge you have with respect to web app or network vapt and other uh, next thing is a bug bounty as i said somebody who are very keen about doing bug bounty can take up this course it will pretty much help you now think about how to be a way to find bugs how to get the it is performed and get it and again you can get the report done for these things about red teaming again i said like it's a hardcore pen testing team in the companies as a red teaming so they requires higher level of knowledge about pen testing advanced reverse engineering malware analysis writing custom exploits so apart from this uh charge you uh, how much activists would charge you for these courses and why are they providing at a least cost are activists are charging just hundred dollars or 6000 indian rupees okay if they provide training it across the globe in their native languages as well as uh, you know formal language like english native languages like spanish and portuguese and also for india they have giving trainings in hindi so we live by a code called help one another and grow together okay that's how we live so far so we are helping each other companies has openings and it's whoever we know if they're looking for a job change we would definitely refer them to you and if you're looking for a job kindly let us know and we will do our best in helping you with that information uh, whatever we have so this is like a community where group of people we can interact and uh, share the jobs or uh, information about job opening so that everybody can get benefit out of it and this is a contact information we have our own website and we have the whatsapp number please go ahead look into our courses uh, check the modules and if you are interested please get back to us and we are happy to help you and that's it for today uh, thank you very much for joining today's session and hope you have got the knowledge and uh, things that you are expecting out of this session today and if there are any concerns or queries please do let us know if you have any anything that you didn't understand from my webinar if you think there is something that i have to improve or uh, i have to change in terms of delivering the content or if i had to add more content into this please do let me know i'll be happy to do that for you and uh, uh, we will definitely make sure that whatever we are doing is going to try to reach maximum people and it's going to help a lot of people is what i hope from this session thank you